this episode, we're going to list 10 awesome facts about the Lannisters you may or may not know. Despite what Tywin says in the show, records show that they have tons of gold and silver mines that have yet to be emptied. Land the Clever So most people by now know that the Lannisters got Casterly Rock and the Westerlands through Land the Clever, so the story is that Land ended up tricking them out of Casterly Rock. However, most Meesters think that Sam the Clever was actually a house guard or retainer of Lord Casterly, and that he ended up impregnating either his daughter or daughters and persuaded the man to give him his daughter's hand in marriage. Lord Casterly had no sons, so everything would be passed to land, and he would end up inheriting Casterly Rock and then the Westerlands, and that's how the Lannisters came about. That would also explain why the Casterlys died off. Tywin and the Mad King Ares used to be besties, but by the end of their relationship, they absolutely hated each other, and this was mostly because Tywin did such an awesome job of helping him rule the realm. Supposedly, there's a Valyrian text that suggests the freehold of Valyria, so where the Targaryens came from and where their people came from before the Doom of Valyria, foretold that the gold of Casterly Rock would destroy them. This might explain why the people of Valyria, who constantly were trying to acquire more gold and riches, never ended up going to the Westerlands, where the Lannisters are, to acquire their gold and silver mines. Bright Roar Bright Roar was the Lannisters' Valyrian steel sword. It was lost when Tom II set sail to Valyria, who had already had the Doom of Valyria happen to it, and so all the dragon lords and everything had been killed but the Targaryens, and he went there to plunder for wealth and sorcery. However, he and the sword never returned. This is something that vexes the Lannisters to this day, and made acquiring the Stark's Valyrian sword that much sweeter. To this day, they have no idea how Tommen died. Before the Lannisters were Wardens of the West, they were Kings of the Westerlands. Through this time, there were perhaps some kings that maybe weren't as great as others. One that really sticks out is Lauren V, who was dubbed Queen Loria, for he was fond of dressing in his wife's clothing and wandering the docks of Lannisport as a prostitute. Yeah, after that king, Lannisters never really named their kids Lauren or Loria ever again. So by now you know about the reigns of Castamere, which is Tywin's famous battle where he destroyed the Tarbex and Rain. However, there's more to the story that explains why people fear the Lannisters so much. When the Reigns retreated to the mines below their castle that they had dug out, they did that because they knew Tywin would end up breaking down their walls and they wouldn't be able to hold them out by just staying in the castle. They sent out people to negotiate with Tywin, but instead of negotiating, Tywin sealed all the mines, trapping them in redirected a small and swift stream to one of the mine entrances, and ended up filling it up and drowning them. Of the 300 men, women, and children in the mines, none emerged, but the screams and shouting could be heard one night, but by the next day, there was silence. Those mines had never been opened again, and after time when it was done, he torched the castle. This is a huge example of what happens when you mess with the Lannisters. Tywin was the youngest hand of the king at age 20. Destroying the reins and Tarbex made him a very respected and feared person throughout the land. The Mad King took liberties with Joanna. So there's rumors that Tywin's wife Joanna had given her virginity to Ares, and he took unwanted liberties with her during the bedding ceremony when Tywin and her got married. And in fact, the Queen ended up dismissing not only her, but other ladies King's Landing, saying that she was sick of her husband making ladies into whores. Also, when Tywin had twins, the king remarked, I appeared to have married the wrong woman. And he also humiliated Joanna when she brought the twins before him at court, and he talked about her ruined breasts and how high and mighty they used to be in front of the entire court. When Joanna died, the Mad King mocked Tywin. So when Joanna died and Tyrion was born, a monstrous little baby, the king said to everyone, they have plucked a fair flower from his hand and given him a monster in her place to teach him some humility at last. 
So the king ended up saying this not because Tywin deserved it. Tywin was a hard worker. He never asked for too much. He was always doing his job. He never, you know, bragged or praised himself about what he did. It was always other people. So Tywin never did anything to the Mad King but served him faithfully and helped him grow his kingdom. The Mad King, however, upon Joanna's death, mocked Tywin mocked him to everyone. Eventually these remarks reached Lord Tywin, who is grieving for his dead wife, who is said to be the only person to ever make him smile. Yeah, we can kind of start to understand a lot more of the animosity Tywin had towards the Mad King. So those are my top 10 awesome facts about the Lannisters you may or may not know. We're going to later be releasing ones for other houses, including more Game of Thrones and Ice and Fire videos, so make sure you like, subscribe, and come back for more geeky videos every day.